Currently, there are 1.7 million people living in the U.S. with some form of limb amputation according to a survey done in 2008 by the Catastrophic Injury Resource Center. Amputations can be caused by various factors including vascular disease, cancerous tumors in the extremities, trauma, or congenital causes. Traumatic amputations find their root on the battlefield and have recently increased in number due to military action in the Middle East. Vascular disease-induced amputations can stem from diabetes, smoking, or the lack of exercise. Congenital amputees are individuals that are born with missing limbs due to circumstances in the womb. A Spanish teacher at our school, Miss Diana Moss, told us about her friend, Donna Yeager, a congenital amputee. Miss Yeager was born without forearms, hands, or legs. She is wheelchair-bound and uses her feet to operate her wheelchair. Miss Yeager has trouble using her cell phone effectively because she must inconveniently place it below her feet. Unable to bring the phone to her ear, she has to rely on the speakerphone setting, which reduces the clarity and privacy of calls. This is especially important in her job as the president of Able Cable Productions in Sunnyvale, California. A landline is not an option for Miss Yeager. She must remain accessible via phone even when she is on the move. To assist her, we, members of the Harker School Innovation Project, have developed CARE, a cellular attachable rotating earpiece that uses a motor to swivel an earpiece into place that can provide the user with private conversations. Through the employment of this device, amputees and others who cannot use their limbs will be able to better use a cell phone to its full potential. To formulate a design for our device, we first researched the products already on the market and found two primary issues. First, the products were expensive, costing up to $800. Second, the microphone could get in the way since it tended to be fixed near the user's head. We sought to build an inexpensive device that would allow for private conversations without interfering with the user's mobility. The prototype design comprised three major steps. Initially, the team members presented an amalgam of strategies to make conversations private and phone usage more accessible. Designs began on paper, then moved to the computer. As we added minor changes to the device, we continued to update our CAD drawings. We created a computer-generated circuit diagram for the motor to move the arm. Next, we assembled a prototype for hands-on modification. Our final design, CARE, features an earpiece attached to a rotating rod behind an attachable headrest. The rotation of the rod and the earpiece is maintained by a motor mounted to the headrest, which can be easily controlled via two buttons on a console. The console is large enough to put a cell phone on top of it for easy accessibility. The entire device is powered by two 6-volt batteries, safely mounted beneath the chair in flashlight casings. This device simplifies cellular conversation because the equivalent of the entire process of picking up and putting down a phone can be achieved through the use of a few buttons. The construction of our device was divided into five parts. The headrest mount was constructed entirely out of PVC. A slab of wood was attached to this mount to serve as the headrest. The rotating mechanism was fashioned out of a PVC piece and ball bearings and was subsequently attached to the wooden headrest. The motor and the gears were mounted on top of this mechanism and the earpiece was attached via PVC. The arm was made by attaching a small PVC piece to a right angle PVC joint and then to a second PVC pipe to form the mount for the earpiece, which consisted of an earphone with a boom microphone. The edges of the flashlight casings, which came with the 6 volt batteries, were sawed off and fixed underneath the wheelchair to save space. Two holes were drilled into the console and the buttons were pushed in and epoxied in place. The console was then screwed onto a PVC pipe, which had a metal L bracket attached to it. This bracket was screwed into the wheelchair to secure the console. Finally, all the wires were connected and routed around the back of the chair to the battery cases underneath the seat and the console nearby. To ensure the functionality of our device, we performed various tests. First, we tested the sound quality of the earpiece by making a test call. The second test involved pressing the master power switches to be sure that the device could be turned off when not in use or in an emergency. Subsequently, we ensured that the overall circuit was performing as expected. Finally, Ms. Yeager came to test out the entire device. After operating it, she was able to have a successful phone conversation. This test showed us that an amputee was capable of successfully using the device and that it served its purpose. Our device proved to be feasible as well as marketable. 
It is easily constructible because of its simple design, common components, and universality. Because most wheelchairs are similarly designed, the main headrest component can be easily transferred among wheelchairs. Additionally, the actual device can be plugged into a variety of cellular phones. The electronics are simple and easy to use. All in all, the components of our device are widely available while its construction can be accomplished relatively easily. Our device can be produced in large quantities because products such as PVC and wood can be purchased in bulk amounts at low prices. The device is fairly customizable in that the PVC pipes making up the headrest can be cut to different lengths and reattached to accommodate different people. The total cost of our device was $63.10, although it would be significantly cheaper if mass produced, making it affordable to all consumers. Overall, our device proved successful in helping an amputee make and receive phone calls, which enables her to more effectively perform her job. The product can be easily produced in large quantities to benefit amputees or others in wheelchairs who are unable to lift cell phones to their ears.